वारे ज मुखे नीवो वच वेलायु को तो राज गो Let's believe that all classical forms are derived from the dance of Shiva, who is the dancer amongst dancers. And when we describe his dance, it is believed that the sun and the moon were his adornment when he danced. If you see every temple, be it Shiva, Devi, or Krishna or Vishnu, uh, right from the crown to the beautiful adornment at the, on the feet, everything is beautiful temple jewelry. Of course, it's pure rubies and uh, precious gems and diamonds that we use. Um, just taking off from there, uh, the dancer who used to offer her dance in the temple, Devadasis used to perform in the temple, they used to adorn themselves as well with the temple jewelry. And that's where I think the connection was because the temple, it's known as the temple dance. It used to be performed in the temples. And uh, the dancers had to look spectacular for the Lord. It was not for ordinary mortals that they got dressed. They got dressed with the best jewelry and the best kind of fabrics to, to, to actually rijha, hai na Bhagwan ko, Thakur ji ko hai, to actually offer their art form to the Lord. <laughs> So today in a contemporary context, uh, as a symbol of that great connect, we use the sun and the moon on our uh, uh, as part of the jewelry to show the connection between Shiva and the dance. And we have beautiful headgear and earrings and necklace and beautiful bangles and rings which uh, adorn the dancer and of course beautiful belt that enhances the waist of the dancer and all this is uh, uh, 
actually heightens the experience of the dance because uh, if you see the dance minus all the jewelry and the beautiful aharya it will not have the same effect as you see a bedecked dancer on stage saying what she has to say Alankar or ornament is an important constituent of the material culture of any society. In the Indian context, the earliest depiction is seen from pre-Indus times. In the Indian uh, Valley civilization, you have the famous dancing girl with profusion of bangles and a simple necklace. Very important are the terracotta beads and even more significant, the etched carnelian beads. These are long red tubular beads which are quite famous of the Indus Valley and they were even exported outside. A very important textual source is the Natyashastra of Bharat Muni. In fact, that gives great details of a variety of ornaments. As for example, you have lotus shaped earrings, you have uh, ivory earrings shaped like leaves which can be seen even in the 7th century AD. In the Mauritian and and Kushan sculptures, you see figurines wearing a single stranded necklace or double, three, five, like Duladi, Tiladi or Pachladi in Hindi. And they are uh, clasped together by rectangular clasps, perhaps of gold. Jewelry had reached its zenith by the Gupta period, between the 4th to 6th century AD, in the Ajanta Caves, Cave 1. We have the famous painting of Bodhisattva Padmapani with wearing an ekavali. An ekavali is a single string pearl necklace with the central bead of sapphire. <laughs> considered gold to be the purest form of metal. So when we buy that, it is a connotation that we are bringing purity into our home and that purity is somewhere going to manifest in our action and thought. That's come in from SSEF. Okay. That gone for certification. Now the only thing um, is for the round gradation, we had two options. We made mocks for them. One is either with the uh, pink diamonds from moving from uh, rubies to pinks to white, or okay. we do complete rounds. So once we get a go ahead on that, we can go ahead with ordering the diamonds. Which one would you prefer? Pink diamonds. Pink diamonds. Yeah. When people look at 
Indian jewellery, they have generally the connotation is of heritage, royal jewellery. Um, what we are doing is to have to put India on a world map where it's more of with a lot of appeal. So it can't. It's not only worn for very traditional Indian functions, but it'll be worn by you know Indians, Chinese, uh, Swiss, Germans. The sensibility is very international. Uh, the finest craftsmanship, the highest quality diamonds, um, the innovations which are there. We have centuries of um, tradition. Uh, we, I think we had jewellery before probably any other country did and appreciation for that. So we have sold through Christie's and Sotheby's. Um, we have sold a necklace for $8 million. So it was like, uh, you know, today $8 million is 55 crores, yes. Uh, we have sold another necklace, a Golconda Lotus necklace, um, you know, was also sold for around 25 crores. And uh, one was sold in Christie's, one was sold in Sotheby's. Every diamond in the necklace was D color, which is the finest. Every stone in the necklace was either internally flawless or flawless. Additionally, every stone was type 2A, which is the purest, uh, the purest diamond that can be had. So a necklace like this had never been done before in history, and it was uh, an exceptional collection of stones that took a long time to put together. Um, the graduation was beautiful, the execution was beautiful. It was a one-of-a-kind piece that would be extremely, extremely difficult to duplicate. In the year 1966, Jewelry Export Promotion Council was established under the Ministry of Commerce, Government of India. Since then, we have never looked back. We are going front and front and ahead and ahead. I'll tell you, in 66, the total export from the country was $10 million, which is approximately $40 billion today. We were a small player in diamond manufacturing worldwide. But over these three to four decades, India became one of the largest manufacturers of polished diamonds. Today, we roughly control about over 65% in terms of value of world production of diamonds, and about more than uh, 88 to 90% in terms of volume of the diamond business. Principally what globalization did was allowed India to play in a global market. We've had very restricted policies in terms of import as well as export. By opening those policies, Indian manufactured jewelry is now available to the rest of the world, where import duties are reduced uh, and are encouraged out of India. I think that has played a very big role for us to become international players from just national players that we were about 20 years ago. The primary job is to liaison between government and the industry. So we interact and liaison between government and the industry to tailor make suitably exim policy. We also promote the budding uh, designers. Since last couple of years, we have been doing India International Jewellery Week, wherein we invite about 50 international media and journalists 
and international buyers, they come and see and we show them that made in India is not a copy of Versace. It's not a copy of uh, anybody else. We know we have our originality and we produce it to them. seeking any help or cooperation from Yemen Jewelry Industry of India. Council is always there to build a bridge of friendship. Much more than people, no problem. We said, okay, okay. But like how this. much? Yeah, it's a very complex piece. Mm. India, to us, is really the most important uh, manufacturing center. And that relationship is well in place over the years. A number of our suppliers, our, our big suppliers, are, are based here. The manufacturer is important to us. And of course, everybody knows 90% of the diamonds in the world are cut and polished here. And that's the most critical aspect for us. Um, we, are, we have a diamond sourcing division of our company. Uh, but in terms of jewelry manufacturing, we're not manufacturers. We are retailers. And we prefer to have the experts do the manufacturing for us. They're here. the largest premier colored gemstone miner in the world. We sell more in India, so um, our rough goes from the auction, gets exported to India, to the companies that have won, um, and then they cut and polish the stones in Jaipur, and they come to all over India and all over the world. Actually, we're looking for distributors over here that uh, had the capability to push our brand uh, also in the uh, local market. Uh, like we do in US, like we do in Russia, like we do in China. Uh, that's what, uh, you know, the future I believe is India. By having these shows you bring different areas together. You know, you've got Antwerp here, you've got, you know, Thailand, you've got people here from all over, so it's a great platform to, for different sectors to meet. I've been the company about 32 years, and, and I remember when New York City was the big show, twice a year, in January and then in the summer. Uh, JCK came about in Las Vegas 20 years ago, and that was revolutionary at that time. And I've heard about the growth here at IIJS, and it's amazing to me. My first time last year, I felt like I was in Las Vegas. Structure is here, so it's a one stop shop uh, for all exporters. And then we have well experienced 
people are normally sent away of by customs also and everything is running very smoothly uh, i get to see a day when any export or import parcel stays for more than 24 hours over here is never held up unless there's some dispute on the valuation otherwise as far as normal routine is concerned all parcels live within 4 or 5 hours of this place coming into this place it's that efficient i don't think another custom house like this exists anywhere else in india to be a member of the world federation of diamond boozers there you need to have a trading hall okay so this is a trading hall meant uh, mainly for international buyers so when an international buyer from another booze comes to india and he doesn't know any uh, any of the people selling diamonds or wanting to buy diamonds then he gets a letter from his boo saying that he is a member in good standing based on that we give him entry to this trading hall and all his demands will be put up on the website electronically and uh, people will come and show goods over here they will negotiate the prices determine the prices he will then get an invoice made out walk over to customs and export the goods of course the payment since the banks are also here money is first transferred and export takes place immediately <laughs> is it is a new concept which uh, help the uh, help emphasizing a point that we should be exporting goods and not the taxes so as is it basically ensure that all the input which comes to the factory for production is free from any tax and apparently it reduce the transaction cost working capital cost and actually it help to export the product in a very very efficient and the competitive way after seeps was introduced number of very important steps have taken place one it allows us duty free imports which means an industrialist is ready to put money into setting up an industry without the fear of having the burden of having to pay large amount of duty on imports gold also is imported now freely into the country with no duty as long as it's being exported so the zones don't have that as a problem uh, customs is located within a bonded area so we do not have to travel to the city stand in line for our exports to go out there are large custom facilities within the zone itself that allows us to export subhash don't forget tonight it's very important that uh, 10:30 the list the last happening with their working capital given to them whether it's being used or misused this is a one time order to walmart in us 13 14000 pieces individual pieces we are shipping today so uh, one of the biggest customers and one of the biggest shipments now the season start all uh, every week we going to have that much pieces to be shipped Right now we have about 200,000 pieces to make every month. Confirm orders. Tara Jewels is predominantly into manufacturing of fine jewelry. Uh by fine jewelry I mean jewelry in platinum, gold, silver, precious metals. Uh, using or studded with diamonds colored stones and other precious stones uh, our basic exports go to the united states europe australia uh, canada south africa so we literally export all over the world uh, china is also an important that whole sector of china is also an important market for us our major customers are companies like signet corporation which is the largest jeweler in the world Zale Corporation, largest jeweler in the United States, 
Walmart Corporation, the largest retailer in the world, Foshini, which is the largest retailer in South Africa, Bevels, one of the largest retailers in Australia. So we cater to the blue chip companies of the world. डायमंड का व्यापार है वो 50 साल पहले सबसे बड़ा था बेल्जियम में बाद में इज़राइल में बढ़ा और आज पूरा वर्ल्ड में सबसे ज़्यादा डायमंड कटिंग होता है सूरत में वर्ल्ड में 100 पीसीस का जो पॉलिशिंग होता है इसमें से 92 मेकिंग ओनली इन इंडिया 1964 में जब भी मैं सूरत में आया तभी सूरत में खाली 200 डायमंड कटिंग का वर्कर था आज 5 लाख से भी ज़्यादा है तभी इंडिया का एक्सपोर्ट 6 करोड़ का था ओनली 6 करोड़ टुडे लाख करोड़ से ज़्यादा हमारा रॉ मटेरियल खरीदने का पूरा वर्ल्ड में मार्केट में से डायरेक्ट सप्लायर भी हमारा है डीटीसी है डी बीयर्स का ही डायरेक्ट माल आता है रशिया में रशिया से भी डायरेक्ट आते हैं बीएचपी कनाडा की भी आता है और हम मार जितना माल चाहिए वो मार्केट में से लेता है दूसरा हमारा तबक का है मैन्युफैक्चरिंग का जो हम रो मटेरियल को पॉलिशिंग करते हैं तो जो हम लूज माल बेचते हैं पूरा वर्ल्ड में तो मोर देन हंड्रेड कंट्री में हम माल बिकते हैं और हमारा माल बिकते हैं वो यहाँ लेने को बायर भी आते हैं पूरा वर्ल्ड में से और इंटरनेट थ्रू ऑनलाइन भी हमारा माल बहुत बिकता है वी इंसिस्ट दैट एवरी डायमंड दैट इज कमिंग इन शुड कैरी अ सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ अथॉरिटी वी एंश्योर दैट नो अनथिकली ऑबटेन्ड डायमंड इज finding its way into the country and we are very active uh, in kimberley certification hamara koi bhi worker ko koi problem hai to pehle to hum kya uska medical इंश्योरेंस है वो लेते हैं दूसरी बात है कि जब भी उसका अगर कोई रास्ते में किसी का देहांत हो गया तो क्या तो कंपनी अढ़ाई लाख रुपया किसी को देती है दोपहर का जो लंच यहाँ लेते हैं फ्री में है कोई 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 चार्ज नहीं पूरा जो यहाँ तीन हजार दो सौ आदमी अभी बिल्डिंग में है चार हजार का कैपेसिटी है मगर अभी जो तीन हजार दो सौ तीन हजार पाँच सौ तक एवरी डे खाना खाते हैं ये कंपनी प्रोवाइडेड कर सके किसी के पास कोई पैसा लेता नहीं और हम भी यहाँ खाना खाते हैं साथ में आई एम ओरिजिनली फार्मर सन और फार्मर ऑल्सो मैंने खेत में सब कुछ काम कर सकता हूँ मैं आई एम स्टडी ओनली सेवन गुजराती आई एम वेन आई वो थर्टीन ईयर्स ओल्ड देट टाइम आई कम टू सूरत मैंने बता दिया 200 सौ ही वर्कर था फिर मैंने छः साल फैक्ट्री में काम किया और 1970 में मैंने तीन पार्टनर मिलके हमने फैक्ट्री शुरू की ओनली विथ टू वर्कर आज हमारी पाँच पाँच हज़ार से ज़्यादा वर्कर है और पाँच हज़ार करोड़ जितना कंपनी का कारोबार है The most important part of my 
training was working with a firm in New York by the name of Carvin French, which was founded in the late 1940s by a Swiss and French uh, two partners. It's still there, it's still in existence. It remains a, an extremely high level workshop. Clients included pretty much every major house, every major jewelry house, uh, Harry Winston, Bulgari, Tiffany, Cartier, uh, Verdura, a lot of the larger diamond houses, William Goldberg, Louis Glick, um, Asprey. So I worked with them for uh, eight years. After that, I started my own business, which I had for 12 years. Thank you. I was at a crossroads uh, in my business in the sense that the economy was shaky. My lease was up. I was going to have to build a new facility, which I wasn't comfortable doing because I really felt that I, I couldn't get a read on the economy. Um, and I was attracted to the prospect of building something like this and in many ways recreating the experience that I'd had at Carbon French where I could take the cumulative knowledge that I'd gained f over the past 30 years plus and put it to use and um, create this, you know, have the opportunity to create this and, and uh, uh, you know, it was a natural progression. Everything fell into place at the right time. You know, it's quite unique for an American to come to India. Um, normally, we think of it the other way around, uh, sending Indians to America for you know, IT. Or, and he has probably over 50 years of experience in jewelry, working with the finest houses. Um, he does a lot of the research and development to enable us to come up with the finest creations. The jewelry industry, I would say, is older than the city of Jaipur. It actually started in Amer due to the patronage of the erstwhile royal family of Amer or the Maharajas of Amer. Uh, at the time of Akbar, 
मिर्जा राजा मान सिंह फर्स्ट ब्रॉट दिस आर्ट ऑफ एनैमलिंग ऑन गोल्ड टू जयपुर एंड ही ब्रॉट ऑल द कारीगर्स और द क्राफ्टमैन फ्रॉम लाहौर ये हुनर साढ़ा पुश्तैनी है मतलब जितों तक साढ़े लोगों के विचार हैं साढ़े जे पूर्वज सन वो काबुल कंधार तो होंगे और पाकिस्तान के जी आके उन्होंने बसेरा होया तो उत्थे उन्होंने यह काम अपने बजुर्गों को सीखिया असी भी यह काम अपने बजुर्गों को सीखे एक्चुअली जो कुंदन मीना है वो जोड़ा राजे महाराजा जमाने के मुगल आर्ट हों सा सिर्फ उस काम त ही नज़र है और असं उ काम असी कर रहे हैं देखो जी ये काम है जो थे मशीन ही नहीं हो सकता साढ़े इतने पहले जापान की भी टीम आई हैं वो भी फिर मार के लै गई लेकिन अज तक कुंदन का जरा अल्ट्रानेट है वह कोई नहीं कट पाया ये देन सिर्फ साढ़े लोग असं कुंदन तैयार भी कर सकते हैं जो कुंदन बन रहे हैं लग रहे जरा इनू गोल्ड तो कन्वर्ट करना पैदा ना यदि शीट तैयार करनी पैंती है फिर उन्होंने कई हीट देने पैदे हीट देने के बाद कुंदन तैयार हो This jewelry is basically wedding jewelry, Kundan Mina jewelry. But then, in last uh, two decades, twenty years, uh, we have lots of designers coming in this field, and they are designing lightweight jewelry also with this art to fulfil the demand of youngsters and also the international market. Uh, we have introduced fusion jewelry. Which is a combination of traditional Kundan Mina combined with modern setting techniques. For centuries, Jaipur has been the biggest center for the lapidary industry, for the jewelry industry, and it is just because of the royal patronage. during the amer period you know it was mostly garnet cutting and polishing and garnet was found near kishangarh not far from jaipur and this emerald cutting came much later uh, i i i believe and i feel so because of the expertise in cutting garnets some jewelers of jaipur brought rough emeralds from colombia and then this emerald uh, cutting and polishing industry flourished in jaipur ever since and that was uh, i believe in late 19th century ninety percent of the emerald cuts in india and they are the biggest exporter of emeralds to to the world even majority emeralds and lot of semi precious like an amethyst blue topaz zircon all kind of color stones it comes i mean they do cut in india nobody can beat the pricings and the quantity especially which they do it more than in jaipur jaipur is a hub of a color stone we make some of our jewelry in here in india and some of the color stone we cut it in jaipur and the old celebrities which we work with them right now they wear those jewelry from india this year we had uh, pamela anderson uh, we have uh, harley madison and we have all the celebrities wear the jewelry from india which is done in here and they know that this business was started by my four fathers during the time of moguls our family has been associated for for centuries with this trade well we are trying to maintain the old traditions and making jewelry using the traditional techniques traditional designs but making it more contemporary 
earlier lot of stone cutting and polishing there were lot of jewelers involved in that but there were very few manufacturing jewelers like us and in those days from in my grandfather great grandfather days most of the clients were the maharajas or the lords or the you know feudal families who could afford uh, expensive jewelry and that has been continuing we manufacture everything by hand because we have the workers we have the craftsmen who are doing it and uh, we 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 don't make bulk pieces we make one of its kind pieces we started making jewelry also collecting jewelry going to different villages we traveled from from himachal pradesh to kerala uh, looking after how people make jewelry so we wanted to know how when why people wear jewelry so we used to design taking inspiration from old designs or combining old pieces and new pieces making something fantastic my customer who were basically either theater artist or film artist or people who have knowledge about art when they can wear for a function or event and they don't find anyone else wearing such jewelry that's why people like halle berry or luchi lu or uh, megan fox Uh, Drew Barrymore or Jennifer Lopez or Beyonce, you know, they are attracted to the Amber Pali pieces because they were bold and beautiful. So all my pieces, which has international look, a universal appeal, their soul is always very Indian. Fifteen years back, we did not know uh, the technology to create. Uh, Uh, hallmark compatible silver jewelry and hence the silver jewelry used to be going out of india as piece of metallic jewelry today silver is going as silver jewelry as sterling silver and guaranteed and you examine it anywhere in the world and we stand the test of time जो कला के ऊपर काम करता है इसको फिलीगिरी वर्क बोलता है माने ये इसमें थोड़ा बारीक रबा का काम होता है और एकदम बारीक बारीक काम से टोटली हैंडमेड का ऊपर काम होता है कलकत्ता का स्पेशलिटी यही है पूरा हैंडमेड ओरिएंटेड काम होता है इधर में ये काम एक आदमी तीस बत्तीस साल तक कर पाएगा बीस तीस बत्तीस साल की उम्र तक कर सकता है और इसको ट्रेन होने में अगर पाँच साल लग गया तो समझिए सोलह से पंद्रह साल का कोई आता है तो ही ये काम सीख के मिस्त्री बन पाता है अच्छा मिस्त्री बनता है और और वो बहुत जोर दस साल तक काम कर पाता है उसके बाद वो लोगों का आँख खराब हो जाता है offering from the jewelry division of Titan Company Limited which happens to be the Matala company and this industry which is amongst the oldest in India we bought transparency in operations trustworthiness in the in the merchandise and the quality standards that the Tatas are famous for Tanishk is the one of the corporate company where we have a lot of latest technology, machineries and facilities. Everything we have automated, so the labor involvement is very less. So thereby, we are able to launch the product in a faster way and speedy way, which the competition cannot copy it. Gold exchange is a very common phenomenon in India. 
we again melt the gold in front of the customer in front of the in front of the customer in the store. So we have our own service center in the Tani stores where a customer can actually bring his old gold and melt in front of him, test the purity and we give him the valuation there and then, which again is a practice which is not transparent in the jewel industry. And the design like I said to you are very unique designs, differentiated but still traditional space, which gives the customer a sense of contemporariness a sense that he's buying something which is from a Tata brand in the first place, designed and differentiated, transparent. People are mobile now in India. I can go and buy from Chandigarh, exchange in Chennai, buy in Chennai, go to Jammu as a matter of fact, and I go to Gujarat or go to wherever. And I have this same brand, same practice, same experience. So that experience which is true brand experience is not available to any other brand in India. When I came across jewellery as a creative source for myself, I thought that I could involve a lot of women to bead and to train them to do this. And I started with just the local women around, like the urban village around, and I started training them. And I started with like eight women in the first year who I trained who would take work from me and go home. I would give them a deadline and then they would bring the goods back to me at a set deadline. But they had the freedom of working at their own time. I actually have a company with clothing, but I want to get into jewellery because it's so beautiful here. And I've just visited a stall and purchased um, some jewellery, placed an order, and I'm really looking forward to receiving it because, uh, well, the jewellery that I've just ordered I think is beautifully made and goes with my range, my collection. So. I'm actually very excited about it. And I love the colour, I love the colours. Um, and yeah, I think the workmanship is beautiful. Um, so excited to be here. Quality is very important for us in Europe. Um, I think coming here is um, well, it's an amazing country for inspiration, for getting the best prices, for, I mean, there's just so many ideas and such creativity that genuinely it's uh, one of the best places I've been to in my career. Be working with a supplier that you have faith in who can deliver a product that meets your standard. Um, but in general, um, I've had quite good experience with jewellery from India. Um, it's quite economical um, from a buyer's perspective and it's extremely attractive. And I think there's, well, I know there's a very big market for it all around the world. Um, but I'm quite specific about the design and the type of jewellery that I like for my company and for my brand. Um, so I spent quite a bit of time working through it with a supplier um, to get something that I'm happy with. And um, I've had quite good success with jewellery from India. No. Any Indian wedding, you know, an Indian Hindu wedding is very, very ritualistic in nature. You know, so on a wedding day, we come with a mindset that the, the bride has to look almost like goddess. She has to be adorned with beauty. We adorn her with a lot of gold jewelry. So first and prime of us, we want her to look very beautiful. That is a day from the mother's point of view where I am giving away my daughter to another family. So when I give away my daughter, it is, you know, that is the right time when we detach our umbilical cord. So it was very significant for me that she adorns a part of my jewelry. So if you see her jewelry, the jewelry that she was wearing was family jewelry, right from the little set that the Ambi set 
to the huge uh, you know, ancestral uh, jewelry, which is about 200 years old and which weighed almost half a kg. That was a part of me being sent along with her. That I'm speaking from the mother's point of view, you know. And uh, I, I felt that uh, I am not going to be alone. There is a part of me which is going to be witnessing her journey in the life. In terms of weddings and jewelry, they go hand in hand, I think, in a country like ours in India. You could go abroad and you have Christian weddings and women are very gently dressed, delicately dressed. Um, there's a lot of ritual associated with every piece of jewellery, why you wear something on the neck, why you wear something on the nose, and how it also associates you with a particular religion sometimes, you know. When uh, you're a Hindu, you wear this long, uh, big nose ring. But when you're a, a, a person of an Islamic religion, you wear something on the side, the colours. Everything has a certain significance in the, in the ancient Vedic uh, system. Uh, I don't know the details of them, <laughs> but I think that's how a woman associates, because she wants to associate with the old uh, prescribed rituals.